Welcome to Rick's Corner. You know I've talked a lot about the golden era of bodybuilding, which was the 1970s. That's when bodybuilding had started to reach its height and became known worldwide through promotion, through contests, through Gold's Gym, through Arnold, the rest of the guys that trained down there. And it was the golden era of bodybuilding. It was probably the best years that we know of. But I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. It didn't just start in the 70s. It had to start somewhere way before the 70s. It had to start back in the 40s which I call now the silver era of bodybuilding, since silver comes before gold. And I'm going to do a series of articles on this for bodybuilding.com, for muscleandfitness.com, and on Rick's Corner. But I wanted to give you just a little bit of uh, a, a preview of what it's about. Bodybuilding really started in the middle 30s, late 30s, when Burt Goodrich, who won the first Mr. America title in 1937. Now, that's a long time ago. Burt was the brother-in-law to Armand Tanney, who was the brother to Vic Tanney. And Vic Tenney had a chain of gyms in Hollywood. He had six gyms, almost like Jack LaLanne's. And he did very, very well with them and then sold them out. But Armin hung out at Muscle Beach. I can flash pictures of him. I actually uh, knew his daughter Mandy very well, went out with her for a while. Uh, Armin wrote for Muscle and Fitness. He was a well-known bodybuilder, a very good-looking guy, Mr. America as well. And these are people that you don't know about because you weren't around then and no one's told you about them. You had... Uh, uh, Reg Park, also way back then. You had Reg Lewis. You had, uh, my God, there's uh, Steve Reeves is one of the first big name bodybuilders bigger than Arnold back then. He was Hercules. Everybody knew who Steve Reeves was. He was a household word. He had the broad shoulders and small waist. The bodies were much, much different back then. It's very, very small waist, very, very wide shoulders, much different than today. And very spot, spotable, spotable if that's a word, but noticeable on a street because of the V taper. And bodybuilding was more about strength and more about health back then. A lot of the bodybuilders did strength feats like driving iron spikes in the wood with their hands or bending bars of steel or muscle control where they would make muscles jump and do different things with them. Beach contests were for fun. It wasn't just about money and winning a title. It was a camaraderie that was just a fun thing to do. And I have talked about this before. There was a muscle house down on, on Ocean or Action in Santa Monica that this lady owned where all the bodybuilders lived. You had Vince Edwards, who was Dr. Ben Casey for seven years on TV, who uh, was Hiawatha in a movie as a bodybuilder. Sean Connery was a bodybuilder. He won a, a Mr. England contest. These are things people don't know about. But it was in the 1940s and 50s. And then the 60s um, came onto its own after the 50s in Muscle Beach, and then in the mid-60s it moved down to Venice in the Joe Gold Gym. So there's a lot there for me to talk about, and I can't do it all in one Rick's Corner because there's way too much. But the bodies back then were really, really well built, and they were natural. There wasn't drugs back then. Very, very unknown factor. And Steve Reeves, who had one of the greatest bodies around, said he only trained three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and he did a whole body workout. And I have that workout, which I'm going to flash up at some point on one of these Rick's Corners. So it wasn't overtraining. It was the day's rest that they felt really gave them the bodies that they need, and it wasn't the drugs. And they look better than most guys do today. I have to really admit that. I hear from so many people down in Gold's Venice and down at the gyms I go to, what happened to bodybuilders back in the day? They had better bodies. They were more strided. They, more, they were more uh, aesthetically pleasing because they had such a great taper and a small waist. They weren't blocky looking. Their diet was meat, eggs, and cheese. They trained three days a week. Like I said, they had three days off. So, and the reason, one of those reasons was because the, the, um, it, not only that it worked, but they had ladies' days, and they never infiltrated the ladies with the men. So the men worked out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, women's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You don't see that in the gym today. It doesn't happen. Everybody trains together. But these are interesting facts. In fact, one of the first strongman bodybuilder ever, and if, you, if any of you are older, you'll understand this, was Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas had a cartoon strip, a cartoon ad in magazines where he kicks sand in the guy's face. And he's going home and he's kicking lamps and tables around, building up his body and working out to go back and beat the bully. Well, the story goes, and this was a true story, that he was at the beach talking to a girl and a bully came by and kicked sand in his face. And he went home with his tail between his legs. Started working out, taking a course in bodybuilding, reading magazines, and came back to that beach and ended up beating up the bully and won the girl over. So that's what caused every man to read that and say, well, I want to be like that guy. I'm going to start working out, and I'm going to start watching my diet, and I'm going to become a bodybuilder and a strong man too. These are things that people don't know about. Charles Atlas, and he ranged all the way from 1939, I believe, and his ad still ran up through 2010, even though he's passed away. So these are Rick's Corners I'm going to bring you on all these characters from the past and all these bodybuilders because they're, they're, they're so unique that it's something that I'm sure you'll want to know. So stay tuned for more Rick's Corner as I go through the Silver Era of bodybuilding, which was long before the golden era of the 1970s. And thank you for being a fan. See you next time.